Hey everybody, some people ask us about the source of our water and uh, about the water change for the fish tanks that we do. So I thought I'd shoot a video today about that. This is our pump house, this is our well. So the water comes from an aquifer. Probably the end of the pipe is about 150 feet down in the ground. But the water level is much higher, probably. Right now you can see the water table is above the ground. For half a year we're sitting pretty low on the edge of the Everglades and for half a year everything is flooded. Three quarters of our lot is flooded with water. But anyhow, we're, we're drawing water about 150, ground, 150 feet from the ground. It comes up through here. The submersible pump on the end of the well pumps the water into this 120 gallon pressure tank. From there, this is our new electronic switch that I just installed, trying to go electronic instead of a mechanical pressure switch that I've been having. I mean, mechanically have to change every now and then, they, they burn out quickly. So we got two of these, one here and one there. Anyhow, from the pressure tank the water goes up, right now it's 80 psi, just shut off. It goes into the RO system, silt filters and six RO membranes XLE 4040 that means it's uh, what four feet long and four four and a half inches in diameter each membrane when new can produce 2600 gallons per day but they age rather quickly because they get plugged up with calcium deposits this is low low pressure RO so we have uh, booster pumps that boost the pressure from 40 to, to 80 to about 100, 100 120 psi so 90% uh, of the water is dumped 10% of the water is collected as a RO, RO water so through this hoses it enters into the storage tank So we have five, I'm sorry, six membranes dumping their RO water in the storage tank. And this is raw well water. Instead of passing all this water through calcite and spending tons of money on calcite and recharging, you know, calcite filters like that, like these, we just add raw RO water right, right in here at a ratio of about 15% raw RO water and 85% is the filtered water 85 to 15 we had we had the, the well water tested by national lab it's it has nothing dangerous it's it would have been drinkable it wasn't if it wasn't light brackish it's got 600 ppm salinity and about 600 ppm hardness magnesium and calcium anyhow from here the pump the pump inside of this tank pressurizes this pressure filter this one is smaller 85 gallons because I ran out of 120 I usually like to have 120 on both because they turn on and off too much this is the pressure switch for it and then it goes into the two uh, charcoal filters and then this is where I take it off and this goes into the into the fish house I've built it quickly like 11 years ago so I didn't really bother with hard wall pipe I just used high quality garden hose so it runs right here on the ground we're gonna walk the path 
it's not the it's not the right way to do this you you want to have hard wall pvc but this is not the pressure is not too high and uh, i was in a hurry and strapped for money so i just used 100 feet coils of of garden hose which i just uh, attached together but then uh, in about a few years the metal the brass ends started rotting and uh, leaking so I had to dig it out dig out the dig out the connections and replace them with PVC barbed couplers to connect to two hoses anyhow this is the back side of the fish house of the number one so the water comes in from the ground right here one one hose is raw well water and one hose is the drinkable water or the RO plus a little bit of well so from here it goes into each of the sumps for the water change it's the same water that we use in the house and the same water that we drink except our water goes through another um, charcoal filter carbon filter but uh, here is the, the water being added to this sump that's a system of one sump and two tanks Here's the water running into the other sump this is also a system of one, of one sump and two tanks two 240s This is a system of six 240s and the water be, is, is added right here in the sump. Underneath them, the sump is 60 feet long by two feet. Okay, and this water is also added to the system of the 15,000 gallon sump and the two 4500s. 1800 gallon tank is also in the same system. That water that you see running down there, that's fresh water from the pump house being delivered into here, into this system. And finally, this water is also running straight into the 25,000 gallon tank. Right here. That's the one. 24 7, 364. Alright, so this is how the water enters all the, all of the uh, water systems. And then uh, all of them overflow. And I'll show you how. So this. From these two systems, those two sumps and, and the connected tanks, it overflows through these two pipes and then it overflows, flows, overflows out of here the same way, three pipes, and they run down and out that way. I'll show you where they come out. This is just a half inch PVC. That's them. That's the three pipes. So all three of those overflow of those systems overflow into the 25,000 gallon pond for additional water change in the pond because this is so huge we don't make enough water to to just pump fresh water in here so what you see this is the flow again 24 7 364 it runs like that all the time 
This is, as I said, is fresh water, straight from the pump house. And the water from the 15,000 gallon sump and the 24500 gallons and the 1800 gallon. This system of three tanks and uh, the large sump overflows through this pipe, which is huge, six, six inch pipe. Out of the sump, goes underground and then it comes out right there. So that uh, water running out of there, that's the water change for that system. But it also overflows into this 25,000 gallon pond. The reason for such a large diameter is because once in a while we have to dump the water quickly from the, from the two 4500 gallons. To, in order to enter in there and catch a fish or what, what not out of these two tanks. So when you're dumping uh, half of these tanks, it's, it's uh, almost 5,000 gallons of water. Very quickly, it runs down into the sump. From the sump, it runs down this six inch pipe into the 25,000 gallons. So uh, that's, that's why the pipe is such, such a large diameter. Okay, so that's how everything enters eventually into the 25,000 gallon aquarium. You probably will not see it too well. There is a beam of a pipe over there on, on the, in the wall. So it comes out underground right here. Runs, runs, runs over here. This is the stand, this is the stand pipe for it. So it overflows into the first quarantine tank, 300 gallon quarantine tank. And from there, it overflows again into the second quarantine tank, the one that I recently glued together. From here, it overflows into the sand filter and then goes in the ground. If you notice that uh, I, don't, I didn't drill the glass anywhere so it it uh, this is this is kind of like a siphon there is a vacuum inside and that's why you know this is uh, two connected uh, the principle of two connected vessels that's how it works if the level is higher here than here the water is going to run that way through this pipe even though the pipe is higher than than the level on, in both in both vessels the same there same here. Once in a while when, when air collects in these pipes I have to use a wet dry vacuum to suck them out to get the air out because air interferes with the flow. Alright so that's our water change. That's the way it works. And has been working for us for the last... It's been set up like this in uh, 2015. So it's been, uh, it's coming up on eight years. All right. Thank you for you for watching our humble video. I uh, forgot to mention that uh, all this water together, added up together is about 10,000 gallons a day. So all of those streams that you just saw are combined to make this this stream so that's about 10,000 gallons a day every day same here this stream that's all the water overflowing from 25,000 gallons into the quarantine.